2003 through 2005 Audi S4 with the 4.2 liter V8 engine, radiator, thermostat, and coolant hose replacement. I'm Brian Nessa from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you step by step through the process of replacing the radiator, thermostat, and some of the cooling hoses. The first thing we need to do is get this vehicle into what they call service mode and we need to remove the front bumper. So I'm going to walk you through that process. We need to get the vehicle, the front of the vehicle up in the air and get it up as high as you can. Use floor jacks and jack stands if you're doing it at home. And then you want to crawl underneath and lower the lower shields down, the splash shields. We want to remove these by turning the fasteners counterclockwise a quarter turn and that should pop them free. So all these fasteners are all around the perimeter of the covers and then there's a couple up on the fender whales up here also. So go ahead and uh, drop those shields down. I also went ahead and took the front tires off and made it easier to get to some of the fasteners here. We're also going to take this lining, the inner fender lining here and peel it back. So there's going to be some torque screws you're going to remove following those around. You only need to do the front half of it and we're going to peel it back. And we're going to do this for both left and right side. So go ahead and peel the fender liner back like this. Now that gives us access to the inside here. So on the driver's side here, I got the fender liner peeled back and here's the washer bottle. We need to pull this little tab right here and slide the outer portion of the washer bottle outwards. It's a two-piece washer bottle. So you'll squeeze the tab and then you're going to pull the washer bottle outwards like this. And it's going to be attached to some wires and hoses on the inside. It's not going to come all the way out. So you're just going to pull it and, and kind of pull it around the corner just a little bit. And once you get it pulled back far enough... If you look back here, you're going to see three bolts, three 10 millimeter nuts actually, and we're going to remove these. To get to those three nuts, I just used a wobbly socket and a long extension and took those right off. Once you get these three nuts removed, then at the corner of the bumper, there's going to be one torque screw at the very bottom. You're going to remove that, and then after you get that uh, torque screw removed right here, then you're going to pull the, the plastic uh, bumper outwards like this. There's a little catch on the side here on the fender. So you pop it outwards like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go around to the opposite side here. And we're going to do the same thing. We pull, pull the fender liner back and remove the three nuts on this side. And we're going to remove the screw right here. And then we're going to pull the uh, liner outwards. So the screw is right here, the Allen screw I'm referring to. So you're going to remove the screw here. And then you're going to pull the bumper out like this until you get a little gap. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go around front and we're going to remove the fog light grills. So to do that, you're going to need a flat blade screwdriver and on the corners here, there's going to be a, a screw. You're going to turn that screw counterclockwise and then you're going to pull the grill outwards. Now you're going to take the grill and slide it inwards towards the, the uh, license plate inwards. And if you look, there's a little tab right here. So what we're undoing is unhooking that tab. So you slide it inwards, push it in towards the radiator and then pull outwards like this and then the grill will pop off. So you're going to do that for the both left and right side. After you get it off, there's going to be a torque screw right here. You go ahead and remove that one and the one right here. Then just behind the one we just took out, there's going to be an 8 millimeter Allen screw. It's a, a pretty large bolt that goes up vertical right here. Let's see if I get the camera up there so you can see it. So this, this is the bolt I'm referring to. So we're going to remove that bolt. And there's going to be one on the left and on the right side. I misspoke a second ago. It's a six millimeter Allen screw. I'm just going to use my quarter inch ratchet to remove these two bolts. Having tools like this little M12 uh, Milwaukee cordless ratchet here makes work like this a lot easier. So this bolt won't 100% come out. It'll drop down about three inches and then it'll kind of just uh, float in there. And that's normal. You're just going to leave it like this right here. Now you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Remove the bolt over here. And after that, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the bumper back a little bit, but there's going to be some electrical connectors we need to uh, disconnect on the driver's side. So there's going to be a hose here for the washer squirters. For the, so we need to pop that off, and then there's two electrical connectors. So there's a little plastic tab. You just pull this little tab upwards, and then you can pop this line apart. It's actually more like a horseshoe clip, so you're going to pop it up and then separate the hose like this. Now you're going to have all your washer fluid drain out on you, so you may want to have a bucket underneath to catch it. After that, there's going to be two electrical connectors. You're just going to squeeze the tabs and pull them apart. Once you get those two connectors disconnected, you can slide the whole bumper off and set it aside. Now that we got the bumper off and set aside, we're going to start by removing the headlights. We need to remove them to get to some hoses underneath the headlights. So we're going to remove the screw here and the screw here. And then underneath the headlight, there's going to be a screw here and a screw here coming from the side. Once we get those four screws removed, then you can slide the uh, 
the headlight back a little bit and then you can get access to the the one electrical connector here so you'll squeeze the tab and pull the electrical connector off once you get the electrical connector unplugged and you can slide the the light off and set aside we're going to do the same thing on this side and the reason why we're going to do it is we need access to these hoses here and it's easier to do it with the headlights out so we're going to remove the bolts on the bottom and the two bolts on the top and then we're going to slide the headlight out back and then unplug the electrical connector and as you can see here the hoses are actually leaking so I also went ahead and peeled this molding back. It's kind of in your way a little bit. Um, just peel it about halfway back and just set it on top of the engine and that's all you need to do there. After you get that, we go ahead and re remove the bolts from the headlights and set the headlights aside. Also, while we're doing this, I recommend that you uh, evac your AC because we need to pull the AC condenser off. So go ahead and hook up your machine and go ahead and, and remove all the Freon from the vehicle. If you don't have this, uh, a machine like this, you can have it evac at a shop before you do the work and then after you're done you can take it back to them and have them charge it back up. So on the side of the AC condenser is a, a pressure switch you need to unplug that so squeeze the tab and pull it back and set it aside. Now we need to unbolt the cooler, the fan modules and the AC lines going into the condenser here. So you can go ahead and remove the uh, allen screws right here on the side of the uh, hose here and pop the hose off here on the on the passenger side and then on the driver side here the uh, the AC condenser uh, is comes up is plugged in from the bottom here so you come the screw comes in from the bottom and then you pull the hose off the bottom of the condenser so you'll unbolt it and then I like to use this little caps and cap these off and try to prevent air and debris from getting in there now that we got the line disconnected on the passenger side we're gonna come over to the driver side and pull the hose off here at the bottom and we'll just let the hose hang down low right here then we're gonna peel the little vent back here and right behind it is a 10 millimeter nut holding the uh, the uh, bracket for the uh, cooler here. So we're gonna take that nut off right back there, that 10 millimeter nut, and we're just, and then we're gonna remove the uh, fan module, and then we're gonna unbolt the four bolts holding the cooler on right here. Then there's a temp sensor here that's mounted on the front of the condenser here. So we can just squeeze a little tab right here and then pop it off of, it, off of its mount, and then we're gonna let the wire and the sensor hang down like this. And then we're going to remove the uh, the 10 millimeter bolt right there for the fan bracket. And then if you come up from underneath vertical on the bottom of the fan module here is two 10 millimeter bolts we're going to remove. And then the module, we're going to leave it all plugged in and just let it hang downward. To make life a lot easier before you do all that, you can remove these plastic uh, panels here. They're on, bolted onto the radiator. So there's one on the left and right side. And once you get these two plastic pieces on the left and the right side of the radiator unbolted, underneath, underneath them will be the bolts for the uh, condenser. Go ahead and unbolt the condenser and the cooler and let what we're going to do is let the coolers just hang down and then once you get the condenser unbolted you can lift the uh, condenser out. You don't unbolt the uh, lines for the cooler you just leave those hooked up and just let the cooler hang down like this. Now that we got that all removed I'm going to take the fan control module and, and pull it over here to the side and the reason why it's right here is the lower radiator hose. We're going to pop that off. We don't want that coolant draining onto the module. You're going to need a bucket on below to catch all the coolant. The hose is held on with a quick connect and there's like a little horseshoe clip that we need to pick out. I'm using a long screwdriver here and I'm putting it underneath the clip and I give it a little twist and pull the clip upwards. Then I use the screwdriver on the edge of the hose and push it off. And I'm not worried about damaging it because I'm going to replace this hose. I recommend you replace it too. I will link these hoses all up in the description also. Now on the passenger side, we're going to pop the upper radiator hose off. I'm going to be replacing the, this hose also. And uh, I will link this hose up in the description also. And this hose goes further back. There's a vent line that goes around the back. And then there's a, a, a T. It tees off onto the cooler down there. We need to un, uh, disconnect it down there. So we'll disconnect it from the main pipe below here, pop off the connector and then pop it off the T right here and unplug it from the vent there. Then we'll just pull the hose out completely. So I pop the clip up, pop the hose off the radiator neck. And if you look there, the vent hose snapped off as I was working on it. So I recommend you definitely change these hoses. They're very fragile. Now that you got the hose off, we're gonna go at the top of the radiator and there's these little clips here. You're gonna peel the clip that and pull it upwards. And this is the actual hold down for the radiator. So you're going to pull those out. So you'll squeeze this little tab and pull this little plastic clip out like this and set these aside. And uh, I almost forgot this vehicle has an oil cooler built into the radiator and we need to remove these oil cooler lines right here. So there's an Allen screw we need to remove. And once you get the Allen screw removed, 
then you can use a screwdriver and then push the line off like this and kind of pry it out. There's an O, it seals with an O-ring, so you want to be careful not to damage the O-ring or nick the O-ring. So you're going to push the, uh, the line back like this. And once you get that one done, now we're going to go down to the bottom of the radiator and there's a second line going in. So we need to unbolt that there, just like we did the top one here. But to get to that one, we need to go underneath the vehicle and we need to remove the uh, hose here that's attached to the thermostat. So we need to go ahead and remove the lower hose here that we already popped it off one end over there. But we need to go ahead and take the clamps off and finish removing this, this ho hose assembly right here. We can also go ahead and unbolt the thermostat and remove the thermostat. Once we get the hose clamps all separated and pulled off, we're going to pull the hose assembly out just like this. Now you can look up there and you can see the Allen screw and get to it easily with a extension and remove that. And then we're going to pop the line off once we get that Allen screw removed. Now for the front side, I'm putting a screwdriver in between the, uh, the line and the radiator and give it a little twist and then push the line out of the radiator. It doesn't go back very far, maybe a quarter inch or so it pushes back and that's as far as you need. Just, you just need it disconnected. Now the radiator is pretty much free, you're going to pull it towards you and then you, you're going to lift upwards and lift the radiator out of the car. So I'll demonstrate that for you right here. So we're going to walk up and we're going to pull it forward and then lift the radiator up. And once you get it cleared from the bottom, you can pull it completely out and set it aside. Now that I got the radiator out, I'm going to inspect the oil cooler lines here and make sure that the O-rings are in good shape. If they're in bad shape or have fallen off and we need to replace them, find new ones and install those. And then after that, I'm going to unbolt the thermostat here. I actually come through the hole in the front where the radiator was to get to the top bolt on it in the corner. We also need to take this hose off the uh, top of the thermostat. And uh, what I ended up doing actually was unbolting the thermostat completely. So I ended up removing all four bolts. But if you want to, you can get to the uh, the thermostat, the hose right here with one of these clamps style and pop that hose off. But I went ahead and unbolted all four of the bolts. And uh, the reason why I let, went ahead and left it on there is because I decided we're gonna go ahead and replace this uh, hose here. It goes to the coolant bottle too. And it tees off right here and goes down to the thermostat. It's leaking right here at, the, at these little seams. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, take, take the hose off completely. So I'm going to uh, pop the hose off the auxiliary water pump right here. Pop it off right here. And then I'm going to uh, pop it off the water bottle. And then pull. And I'm just going to push it downwards and pull it out the bottom of the vehicle. With the uh, thermostat housing still attached to it and made it easier and then when it's out here i can remove the hose pull the clamp off and and change out the thermostat so it's going to look like this once you get it out now you can replace the whole thermostat housing in the thermostat or you can just get the thermostat and the o-ring and reseal it i chose to do it like this because the whole housing it's a couple hundred bucks and it's about a quarter of the price just to change the thermostat so it's spring loaded in here you have to press the spring down and turn it uh, uh, clockwise a quarter turn or counterclockwise a quarter turn and then the uh, thermostat will pop up and then you can install the new one so you put it in position and you'll line up the uh, little port there with the port at the bottom of the thermostat and then you push down and rotate it back in clockwise after that, you're going to put the O-ring into the housing underneath the vehicle. Then you're going to line up the, uh, the thermostat housing on it and just go ahead and start the bolts and tighten those all up. Now that the thermostat is bolted up, I'm going to go from the top and feed the new hose downwards down towards the thermostat. And then put this in onto the auxiliary water pump over here and then the, the other end onto the uh, coolant reservoir there. You can go ahead and tighten up all those clamps. I will link up the part numbers for this too also in the description. So now we're going to go over to the opposite side of the vehicle and we're going to install this, this uh, hose here that has all the vent hoses on it and goes onto the main pipe. So you're going to put it on the main pipe, put it onto the little adapter and then the vent line that goes backwards underneath the air cleaner there. And um, here's the part numbers for this. I will link this up in the description. Now we need to prep the radiator before we install it. I wanted to show you the part numbers before I uh, do that. So now we're going to peel off these uh, rubber grommets that were on the old radiator and transfer it over to the new radiator. And then this little plastic molding here on the top is you just peel it off and you're going to transfer it over. And you're just going to over look the uh, old radiator over and make sure that there's no other uh, parts needed to be transferred over. Now we're going to install the new radiator. At the bottom of the new radiator are, are two little nipples and they plug in or stab into two little rubber grommets at the bottom of the core support, one on the left and right side. So you'll line up those little nipples and you know kind of at an angle and then you press the radiator into those and then once you get them pressed in 
then you push the radiator forward towards the engine until it goes underneath the uh, core support. I had to push the little rubber grommets in the corners downwards a little bit with my thumbs too to get it to line up and then push it in. And once you get it pushed into place, then you put the clips that held it into the top. So the little plastic clips, just push them in until they click on the left and right side. And that's what's holding the radiator into position. Now on the passenger side of the vehicle, we can go ahead and finish installing the upper radiator hose. So I have the clip pushed downwards already, and I'm gonna lube this up, and I'm gonna lube it up with some dish soap. So I put a little dish soap on my finger and then rub it on the o-ring on here and that helps it slide on so i line it up with the neck on the radiator and i reach around where the hose uh, where the headlight was i reach through the headlight like this and then i pull the radiator hose onto the radiator until you hear it click and then i give it a tug to make sure it's not going to pop back off you can also do it with the clip upwards and then push it on and then make sure you push that clip back down and make sure it's secured now I'm going to reach through the headlight hole here and install the upper hose for the oil cooler here in the, in the radiator. And then I'll install the Allen bolt that mounted it in. Then I'll go back underneath the car and mount the uh, lower oil cooler line into the radiator and bolt it all up. Now that I got the two cooler lines bolted back up, I'm back underneath here. I'm going to install the lower radiator hose. So I'm going to make sure I lube up the, uh, the fittings and I'm going to reach over the top like this and insert the, uh, the, quick connect onto the radiator and press it on and then hook the other two up to the thermostat and coolant pipe and then tighten down all the hose clamps. Once you get the hose pressed on, you, from the front of the radiator, you can see the clip easier and you can make sure that that clip is pressed on and you wanna give that a tug and make sure it's not gonna pop off and then go ahead and remount the, uh, the hoses and tighten them up. Now we can remount the condenser on the front of the uh, radiator with the four screws that came with it. Normally, I would recommend replacing the condenser if you're this far in there, but the customer is on a, a little bit of a budget, so we're doing as much as we can. So we're going to reuse the old condenser. So I'm going to go ahead and mount this on the front of the, uh, the radiator. So I'll start the bolts and then run them in until they're all snug. Once the condenser is bolted back to the radiator, then I'll take the cooler here and put it into position on top of the uh, condenser and start the four bolts. There's two on the top and two on the bottom. Once they're all started, I'll go ahead and tighten those all up. And then we're going to take the fan module here and slide it underneath the, uh, the lines here and start the bolt there. And the two bolts that came in vertical on the bottom here. After that, we can start the nut that went on the, uh, that held the, the lines in position right here. So you flex this little back and start the nut and tighten that up. And then you're going to plug in the, uh, the AC condenser pressure sensor. Plug the sensor that went on the front of the condenser back into its little bracket right here. Make sure that's secure. After that, we can reinstall the uh, line that went on the bottom of the condenser here. I used tape to seal it off to make sure no moisture and stuff got in there. I also replaced the O-rings on the uh, hose here. So once you get that all connected, you can go ahead and install the bolt and tighten that up. And you're also going to do the same thing for the line on this side here. So you're going to reinstall the line here and then the, uh, the screw that held it on, tighten it up. Then you can put these little plastic moldings that went over right here back on with the two screws that mounted it on on the top and the bottom. So you'll remount these screws on the left and right side. I've seen people leave these off and these are designed to direct the airflow into the condenser. So if you leave them off, it won't have nearly the cooling efficiency you need. So make sure you put those all back on. Now we can go ahead and install the headlights on the left and right side and plug the electrical connectors back in and slide them into their positions. So I took each headlight and I made sure that they were plugged in and then slid, slid them into uh, position. And you want to take your time and make sure that you don't hit the edge of the fenders and chip them. So I slid them in and then I started each one of the bolts by hand. Uh, I don't tighten them down until I have all four of them tightened or started. And then I kind of hold the headlight assembly and into in the place. And I use the old reference marks and I kind of look at the fender and how it's lined up with the fender before I tighten the bolts up. So once I'm confident that the headlight is leveled the way it was when it originally came out, then I tighten all four of the bolts down. And I do that for both left and right headlight assembly, and then I tighten all the screws down. Now it's time to install the bumper back in, and on the right side or the driver's side of the vehicle, we need to plug in the washer fluid squirter here and push the clip in it and make sure that's secured and the two electrical connectors get plugged back in. The washer squirter hose here, you'll have to kind of pull it forward towards the front of the car to get access to it. So you're, and then you'll, once you get that all connected, then you'll stab the uh, bumper onto position. I recommend that you have a helper do this. This is, it's a lot easier with two people. 
and you can do it with one pe person but it's a it's a lot safer and easier to do this so on the right side i'm plugging in the two electrical connectors and, and remounting them onto their little spots where they mount onto and then i'll pull that that hose for the uh, washer squirter i'll pull it forward and I'll, and I'll attach the two hoses and then there's a little horseshoe clip on there you want to make sure that horseshoe clip is in position after that you'll line it up with the headlight and the fender on the side and slide the three little bolts on the that go through the fender into the uh into their position on both left and right side and you want to do this together as a team now we can resecure the main bolts going through the bumper on the left and right side uh, resecure those two allen bolts i just used my milwaukee ratchet here to run it in until they were snug and tight I did that for both sides. Now inside the fender wells, I reached around back and started the three the three 10 millimeter nuts that held the uh, main bumper on. And I did that for both left and right side. And then I re-secured re the, the, the plastic molding right here and put the, the screw in. And then I flipped the lining down and started all the mounting screws and uh, re-secured that. And I did this for both left and right side. So you wanna make sure that this molding is snapped into place. You pull the, uh, the the washer bottle back here and start the three screws in the back. Start start the Allen screw in the bottom. Once you get that pulled back, and then you can uh, resecure the uh, washer bottle right here. You want to make sure the Allen screw is uh, right here in the corner, and then after that, you're going to flip the uh, lining down, secure the screws, and then we're going to put the lower shields back up into place underneath. I also had the shields pressure washed before I reinstalled them, got all the old oil and coolant and debris off of the bottom of these shields. Then I lifted them up into position, resecured all the fasteners and installed the front tires and torqued those down. Now you can lower the vehicle back down and install the air snorkel here. This vehicle, the snorkel was missing, so I'm not going to install that. Then you can go ahead and recharge your AC. Just follow the procedures for your proper AC charge. And then after that, we're going to fill up the coolant bottle reservoir here with Volkswagen Audi approved 50 50 mix coolant mixture here we're going to fill it all the way up until it's completely full it may take a, a couple minutes to fill it all the way up and then we're going to start the vehicle up and we're going to let it run and we're going to uh, double check our coolant level it may drop down as we start it up and then uh, we're going to fill it up we're also going to run this vehicle with the heater on low and the heat on the highest position and you're just going to run it until you hear the cooling fans operate and run. Once those cooling fans operate and run, you know the thermostat below is opened up. You're going to double check your coolant level. You want to make sure that it's not over the max line on the bottle. And if it is, you need to suck some of that fluid out. Then you can reinstall the radiator cap. You're also going to double check your headlight operation. Make sure that all that works. We also need to reinstall the little grill pieces that went over the uh, fog lights here. So you're going to stab them in at an angle like this. So you'll slide them in like this behind a little hook here and you'll make sure that little hook hooks into the bumper like that and then pull it towards the the outside of the car and then you'll swing it into position and start the one nut and you're going to do that for both left and right side and then you're going to make sure that your washer fluid is topped off so i will link up all the parts and tools that i use in this video in the description that way if you need to pick up any of those you can find those there i'm brian Essa from how to automotive i'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos encourage you to subscribe invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this thank you again for watching